Hannah here. Welcome to Sew Learn Create, where I do videos on sewing, crafting, and DIY projects. And to help our channel grow, consider joining my Patreon page. The link will be in the description box, where you will get bonus content and written patterns for many of the projects. Today's project, we're going to make a soap holder. It has a loop where you can hang it in your shower, and the soap fits in the pocket. And the back is terry cloth. It's great for camping, camp for your kids, and just any everyday shower. So let's get started. Matt one, take two. For today's project, the soap holder, you'll only need the following supplies. You'll need a piece of terry cloth that is six inches by five inches. And I'm using a towel from Dollar Tree, the utility towel. Um, but you can use any kind of terry cloth, an old uh, bath towel, washcloth, whatever. You'll also need a piece of elastic that is four inches long, and I'm using half inch elastic. You'll need two pieces of fabric that are five inch square, and I'm going to use this Batman fabric because I'm making this for my cameraman, and that's the fabric he chose. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your five inch squares and we're going to create the folded hem on our fabric because we want no raw edge showing on the inside. That'll help it, you'll wash this a lot so that'll help keep it um, nice and secure. So to do that you're going to take your square, you're going to fold over about a quarter of an inch and you're going to press it. Then you're going to take and you're going to fold that one more time, about a quarter of an inch again, and you're going to press that. And that puts our raw edge inside so that it's nice and uh, tidy. And then I put a couple of clips just to hold it in place until I go to the machine. You're going to do that with both pieces. Now this one, I am using my selvage edge when I cut it because I'm going to turn that under and it won't show. So I'm going to turn it about a quarter of an inch and press and a quarter of an inch again. And I'm going to clip it just to hold it in place until I get ready to stitch it. When we go to the machine, we're going to stitch all the way across both of these hems to secure them in place. So let's go to the machine. Now we're just going to stitch right across here to make our hem. And when you do your hem, you want to stitch as close to this edge as possible. And that keeps it nice and secure. So I'm going to Start with my needle down, sometimes that helps, and we're just going to go straight across. Uh, got a thread hung, it looks like. There we go. And then I'm going to chain piece these. So I'm not going to take my first one out. I'm just going to go off the edge, lift up my presser foot slightly, and just start my next piece. Now that we've got those hemmed, we'll go back to the mat and start assembling. Now we're ready to assemble before we can stitch all the way around. So we're going to take our terry cloth and we're going to lay it down. Then we're going to take one of our pieces that we hemmed and that'll be the bottom. And we're going to put it lining up our raw edges with our hemmed piece towards the middle. And then I'm going to take my elastic. I'm going to fold it in half 
and I'm going to clip that right in the middle of my terry cloth at the top to hold it in place. Then you're going to take your other piece that you hemmed and you're going to turn it face down. Oops, hold on. This needs to be face down also, sorry. So that goes face down, then our elastic. We're going to take this piece, lay it on top, making sure that our raw edges are lined up and our hemmed piece is towards this direction. So our hemmed piece, that edge that's hemmed is up here and this one is here. And they overlap. And then I'm going to clip it all the way around. And I like to clip it where those uh, edges come together to make sure they don't slip on me. One more. And then I'm going to take, hold my elastic in place, and then I'm just going to take that clip and clip my fabric, my elastic, and my terry cloth. When we stitch, we're going to just start on a side, not in the corner. We're going to stitch all the way around, and this is how we'll turn our project right side out. So, let's go to the machine. Now we're going to stitch all the way around, and we'll use this op opening right here to turn our project. So I'm going to put it in my machine. I always start on the side of it, never in the corner, because it's easier um, for your machine to start stitching. And I'm using my presser foot as my guide, which makes my seam allowance a little over a quarter of an inch. And we're just going to stitch all the way around. When you get to that corner, leave your needle down, lift your presser foot, turn your project, and it all stays together nice and neat. And I just want to make sure that when I get to this section of this hem and the hem that's under here, that they don't flip up on you. So this one is where my other hem is, and I'm going to put my finger on top of it just so it doesn't shift on me. And my elastic is clipped with this one, so I'm going to hold my elastic with my finger. I'm going to stitch up to it, and then when I remove this clip, I'm going to go over my elastic and back stitch, and then go forward again just to give that a little more reinforcement. I'm going to back stitch, and then go forward again. Last corner and we're almost back to where we started. And I like to overlap my stitching where I started and back stitch a little bit to secure it. Now we're going to set our machine to zigzag so that we can zigzag across this seam allowance because your terry cloth and your uh, cotton fabric will fray over time when you wash it. So we want to kind of encase that so it doesn't fray as much. So we'll set our machine for zigzag stitch. When you set for zigzag, there's two things you need to change on your machine. You need to change to your zigzag stitching, which on mine is number two. So I've set it to zigzag. And then you want to change your stitch width. And this is determining how far over, back and forth, your stitches will go. This seam allowance is, is only a quarter of an inch, so I'm going to set that to about a four. And that way it'll stitch to the side and then come back and not go over my original stitching. So I've set my width to a four, 
and I've selected my um, zigzag stitch. So now we will stitch. Again, I'm going to start in the side, not in the corner, um, just because it's a little easier. So when you zigzag, it'll come to, to the left and then the right. And we just want to make sure that it's going a little bit off this edge so it kind of gives it a, a nice finished look. And when we come to the corner, we do the same method. We leave our needle down, lift our presser foot, turn, and just keep going. And because we've already gone across this uh, elastic several times, we don't need to back stitch over that. We can just go straight across. Now we're back to the beginning, and I will back stitch a little bit there to secure it. Now our raw edges are secured a little more so they don't fray as much in the wash. So we'll go back to the mat. Now we've zigzagged and stitched all the way around and on this project we will not clip our corners because we've done that zigzag we're going to leave them nice and just squared off. So now you're ready to turn your soap holder right side out. And I will use my chopstick to kind of poke those corners out a little bit gently. Kind of work around underneath that top piece and get my corners out. And I like to give it my project a press. Um, so that everything lays nice and flat. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to the machine and top stitch all the way around. That once again kind of encloses those raw edges on the inside so they don't fray as much in the wash. So we're going to give it a quick press. You just want to make sure you don't press too mu much on your elastic with a hot iron because it is uh, polyester and nylon and it will melt. Now that's nice and flat, we'll go back to the machine and we'll top stitch all the way around. Now we're going to top stitch all the way around. And again, I don't want to start in the corner. I want to start on a side of my project. And I'm going to use the inside edge of my foot as my guide. And that gives me about an eighth of an inch of a seam allowance so it's nice and tight. The one thing you want to remember is to be sure and put your machine back to a straight stitch. Leave that needle down, turn. And you are dealing with a lot of bulk in this corner because we didn't uh, trim those. So sometimes you'll need to give your uh, project just a little bit of a, of a help or a tug when you first start on those corners. Elastic. 
last corner and we're just going to come back and stitch over this beginning just a little bit back stitch to secure it And our soap holder is done. All you need to do now is add your soap. Slide it in, and then you just pull it over the top. And your soap holder is ready to go. I hope you liked today's project, the soap holder. And remember, they're great for camp when your kids go to camp this summer. And don't forget to check out my Patreon page in the description box below. See you in the next one.